Jeremy Ellis here, maker of rockzeta.com. I just a couple weeks ago got this uh, Raspberry Pi 3 with a camera nicely attached where it should be um, and a screen. So let's turn it on and let it boot up a bit. You get some color. I just want to show you this thing. This is a pin diagram that I just kind of cut out. And put over the top of the pins. Uh, it's booting. And what I'd like to do today is to show you how to set this up with an IoT uh, cloud-based network called Particle.io and have it do some of the cool things uh, photons and Arduinos can do. So it's booting right now. Uh, it's booting into Raspbian, uh, I think it's called Noobs. And, and I'm brand new to uh, Raspberry Pis. Uh, I'm reasonably good with Ubuntu Linux and reasonably good with the Photon. But there you go, nicely set up, buttons all going, you got your web browser, you got a couple of, oops, you can't see that, so the, the menus go. Uh, one thing for um, doing IoT stuff is the Pi configuration. Uh, interfaces. See there's SPI, I2C, and Serial. It's UART. Uh, that's reasonably advanced stuff. Notice SSH is enabled to uh, start with and VNC hasn't been installed. Uh, and the camera I enabled. So those things are just something uh, you should know about. So let's move on. So Jeremy Ellis here. We're going to try to put the Raspberry Pi on the Particle uh, Cloud IoT support site. First thing you might want to look into is the docs. And when you get to docs, notice Photon is kind of their flagship. We want Raspberry Pi, we want getting started, and we want to install. So what we're doing here, and there's how to SSH into it, but you're welcome to just use a keyboard, hook it up to some um, HDMI per, um, screen. Um, by the way, this Pi Local thing doesn't work. You're going to have to use some kind of software. I use Fing, F-I-N-G, on my Android to find out what the IP was. Uh, Putty, uh, you just enter the IP and then type in your password, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the main thing you want to know is this thing. That nasty looking line, you've got to enter it exactly on the Pi. And then it's going to go, if you, if you go in the docs, it has a movie of, of this happening, and you can see what it's going to do. It's going to install a bunch of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then it'll ask you for a, a name, uh, your email address, stuff like that. Uh, hopefully, you will have already got an account. So once that's done, now we should be able to get back to Particle and don't know where my particle site went go to the IDE the console and I'm gonna show you my github site which hopefully you know how to fork a site you can fork my site and then work with it basically it's got uh, two things index.html and roxetta.ino it's got a config.xml just for when we want to make an app of your your website anyway let's move on Hello, Jeremy Ellis here. This video is about getting the Raspberry Pi working on the Particle.io um, website, uh, IDE, uh, cloud, whatever. Let's go. So it's got community. It's also got here console. I'm going to load that up and the IDE. I'm also, there's the console, not much interesting there. We want this part, the log. And there's the Particle IDE, which I've got. Uh, something loaded already. So we're going to go to the GitHub site. The link will be in the uh, blurb below the video. And the important things are, here are the rocksetter.ino file and the index.html file. Um, both of these we're going to go to in a different way. I'm going to go to this one, which is the website of that particle. There we go. This is the information we're going to get to. Uh, work with our Raspberry Pi and I'm going to zip over here to the um, particle site in which I've loaded the roxetta.ino. Now this is the stuff that's going to be flashed to 
the Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Uh, let's flash the information. And while it's flashing, I just want to show you two things. Uh, one is called the settings, which has your token. I can't go there because it will show you my token. The other is the devices. And if we pull that down right there, there's my Photon and there's my Raspberry Pi. If I pull those down, you'll see the device ID. So let's go to the particle console. Uh, my device went offline. Well, it got flashed. The code got flashed. When, and there it is. It's just sitting there waiting for me to do something with it. So I'm now going to go to the web page and enter in that device ID and enter in that access token and click store. That will store this information locally on my browser. It will not store it on the cloud. Um, so that when I open up my browser, browser again, I have access to that. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click who am I and just double check. 31 means the Raspberry Pi. If it said 6, I would be working with my Photon. Uh, let's go to the console. I'm just going to bring it over here. Still nothing much interesting happening there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the D7 light on the Raspberry Pi. Now we turn it on. It gave me some feedback right there. It says it's 1. But here we go. Raspberry Pi, digital write, D7 pin, which is actually the GPIO 19 pin. And it returned 1. Uh, if I go back to the web page and hit low or you know off or one or whatever it returns and the screen if I pull the screen out a little bit more it'll show me that that's a zero. Now we're hooking up output from GPIO 19 uh, this time we're gonna have a positive coming out from GPIO 19 into the LED to the resistor and this time it's going to ground. Now I can use that to test um, digital writing and also analog writing. So here we go. Uh, digital write just turns it on and off. A couple of other th interesting things. Uh, we can digitally write to any of the GPI pins. We can digitally read from any of the GPIO pins. I, I don't have that one hooked up right now. So it's just reading a zero. Um, we can analog write to them, and I'll cut to a video of this, but basically we just... So here we go with analog write for D7255, uh, that's GPO19. There's bright, there's less bright, there's off. Less bright 100, off 0, bright 255, 100, 0. What I'm interested in at the moment is the analog read. The Raspberry Pi does not have analog read the photon does. But we can use a capacitive uh, situation where you've basically got 3v3 volts to a variable resistor to um, a GPIO in a di digital pin but also from the resistor going through a capacitor and then another resistor into ground. So it really bothers me that the Pi has no built-in analog readability like the photon, so I kind of jerried together something that might actually kind of work. Uh, what we got is this white, well, red wire um, to 3v3, and then blue to the AO pin, uh, which for the Pi is GPIO 15, oh, sorry, 18, and then ground. And what's happening here? is uh, the 3v3 is coming into a variable resistor which can kind of mock your uh, photo resistor and then right after that it's going back to the digital um, input output and it's going to a capacitor in this case 8.1 and a hundred ohm resistor and back to ground and I've got the program doing something where it's counting how long the capacitor took to uh, charge and it makes some sort of variable uh, uh, analog read. Just change that. Let's see if we get a different reading. Yeah, there we get a different reading. So, that's about it. You've got digital write, you've got digital read, you've got analog read and analog write. It's a little hard setting up the analog read on the Pi, but not impossible. Uh, on this page, it has a couple of other things. Uh, you can say exactly what, it, what you want it to do. So digital write, you can send that. Let's flip back here. Processing, got the one again. Uh, here were a bunch of things. 
uh, the analog write had a wrong pin number. Um, analog read, yeah, looks all pretty good. A um, couple of bits on this web page, which you can delete once you got your own web page going. Uh, on the photon, it's got the D0 up to D7 digital. It's got the A0 up to actually A7. Um, the analog read tells you where PWM is. Uh, all kinds of little. information there uh, explains serial uh, I2C SPI and UART uh, for the Raspberry Pi things are a little bit different uh, once again I2C is GPI 2 and 3 SPI and it's got a little diagram I cut this out and threw it on top of my pins it was hard to kind of squish it in but here it says things like D0 for the photon it matches things up D1, D2 through D3 on the photon uh, analog 1, analog 2 uh, tells you the PWM uh, pins. Um, and now, uh, the final little step. Uh, so now we're controlling our Raspberry Pi on the internet. Well, wouldn't it be great if we could control it on an app? So what you do, you get an Adobe login to uh, build.phonegap.com. Uh, grab, here's mine, but hopefully you'd fork it and grab your own. Uh, I'm just grabbing that, it's the URL with dot, uh, .git on the end right there. So it's particle photon raspberry pi iot dot git. We're going to pull that and it's going to uh, build me an app. And basically it's pretty amazing. The only fancy part on the GitHub site is this config.xml, which simply gives you some suggestions on which versions. Uh, this is the important part so we can read with, so we can connect with Particle. And let's see, has it been built yet? Particle communication. Uh, if you click on that, you'll see a little bit more information. The iOS has an error because I'm not paying $100 a month, uh, a year to uh, make free iOS apps. Um, here's the Android, there's the, there's the Android, there's the Win 10, download that APK, email it to yourself, or use the barcode scanner and upload it to your, your phone. And then you can control your Raspberry Pi through your own app that's made by just a fancy web page. Hope you had a good time, hope you use the Raspberry Pi.